Chinese medicine practitioner and acupuncturist in downtown Toronto, Canada. Welcome to my live post number 30, and I'm very excited because tonight we have a special guest because we have a very special topic that's dear to my heart, and it's called makeup. And most of you, I think, are using makeup at some level or another, so I think it's really important to discuss the um, fact that we might want to look and delve into the properties of our makeup so it's um, more non-toxic. And oftentimes, I think people just grab the first thing they see on their shelves and really not think much about it, right? But here we have Janice, who's virtually, an, well, she is an expert on the topic, and she has a personal story to tell. So I'll actually just take it away to you so you can tell your story. First of all, um, why did you produce this makeup line that is non-toxic, and we'll ask more about that. Mm -hmm. But why did you go and do that in the first place? Well, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of history and a lot of reasons, and I should say hello, everyone. My name is Janice Ross, and my line of makeup that I have uh, is Janice Carroll Cosmetics. And um, as Mary asked, uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> hello! <laughs> Here's another little, a little, uh, just little samples. Little samples of what it looks like, but the one that Mary held is actually what we're going to talk about. Um, one of lipsticks. which, by the way, is on my lips. Which is stunning. Thank you. I really like it. And I have to tell you, I have gone to health food stores decades ago looking for something nice that I want to wear. And, I, and back then, I never found one that I quite liked and mm -hmm. stuck with, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really, and um, truth be told, I, I don't really normally wear much makeup. And um, the one thing that I would turn to um, very quickly would be a lipstick. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's my biggest seller. Primarily, as we were speaking before, and I bet... A lot of you ladies out there uh, would agree with that even if a woman doesn't wear any other makeup she's very you know min minimalistic whether you're older like me younger like Mary or even <laughs> younger like my nieces and and all of you know that age group with young young children a lot of us will just turn to either a lipstick or a lip gloss to give us that color. Um, I think what propelled me, other than, there's a lot of reasons that propelled me into formulating and having my own company. And um, one of the things that really pushed me, other than my, my entrepreneurial spirit that I've always had, is that I saw a sign a number of years ago and it said, and I actually think it was a billboard on the side of a, of a bus shelter. And I'm driving by, it says, do you know what's in your lipstick? And I went, now after years in the industry, I've been in the industry since my childhood, actually, my young teens. My very first part-time job was in uh, the cosmetic department. Uh, at the very first Shoppers Drug Mart that existed in the city at York Mills and Bayview, actually. It was originally Koffler's Drugs. And wait, just, just as a precursor, if there's yeah. any Americans that watch, Shoppers Drug oh, Mart is one of the biggest uh, chains in Canada. Absolutely. And it's grown to be a giant. It's Farmer Pre in, in Quebec, and, and it's in Israel, it's in... Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't know it's that. Quite, anyway. It, anyway, <laughs> to get on to the reason, yes. uh, going through school, cosmetics seemed to put together my passion for art, people, business, helping that person feel good about themselves. And then the other part of it was the, the design and the element. And, and I studied art my whole life, um, my whole school life anyway. And, and uh, uh, during university, I really wasn't sure which direction I would take. But I ended up back in the industry and uh, loved it. Uh, but why some, not toxic? Had some health, health challenges myself. Okay. So Mary's zooming in, and she's right, because 
Sometimes we're shy to tell our personal stories, but there is a personal one behind this. Combined with my history that you know of cosmetic in the cosmetic industry, um, I had some challenges having children, not getting pregnant, but staying pregnant. Uh, and now I'm thinking back because Mary, with her expertise, made me think about it. Like, really, maybe there were issues there where I was, you know, ingesting things that I shouldn't. Who knows? But I was having repeated miscarriages, and I know you deal with infertility and, and, and all of that, and I'd love to learn more about it. But uh, I had my first child. I was quite ill, but I was fine. Then I had uh, two miscarriages, one after the other. And then when I had my second child, I was also hospitalized for about six weeks because I just, I had hyperemesis, which is... Extreme vomiting, and that's very... Um deleterious for one's health, right? And safety of you and baby. And baby. They were yeah. quite concerned. So got through it, had my kids. Um, fast forward through stressful years, uh, divorce, uh, bringing up children, uh, single parenthood, uh, various entrepreneurial businesses while I was doing other issues, other jobs. Uh, I then knew, I always knew there was a lot of cancer in my background, in my family. Uh, my grandmother had um, esophageal cancer. My aunt had ovarian cancer. And then in 2008, my mother passed away from ovarian cancer. Actually, she didn't pass away from ovarian. She passed away from C. difficile, which is another horrible thing, but after her cancer surgery. This prompted myself and my sister to get tested for the BRAC gene, which many of us know about because Angelina Jolie was very good at going public and reaching out to other women to um, not be afraid to be proactive with their health. So I'm kind of like Angelina. <laughs> <laughs> my sister tested negative. I tested positive. So... I've been very proactive. I had my hysterectomy a few years ago and then recently, a year ago, I had a double mastectomy and reconstruction because my chances for getting breast cancer were still really, really high. Uh, the same gene predisposes you to both a very high uh, incidence of, of getting or a high probability of getting either ovarian or breast. So I you got rid of both? Got rid of both. <laughs> because I want to be here. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, on top of that, the first, going back to the lipsticks, okay? Lipsticks are my biggest seller. Mary just asked me a few minutes ago, what's your biggest seller? What do you think is lipsticks? For sure lipsticks, okay? Uh, my lipsticks are my pride and joy. They are pick number one, paraben-free, so and tell us why paraben free is important. That's what I was just... Parabens are synthetic preservatives that have been in a lot of our cosmetics, hand lotions, over the counter, all of those things to preserve... It's, it's, they call it an antiseptic, antibacterial. But over the years, we have found that parabens, once absorbed in the system, can cause you to be quite estrogenic and estrogen too much estrogen links us to breast cancer and in fact there was something I read today uh, in preparation 99% of cancerous breast tissues once examined mm -hmm. have a high level of parabens in them interesting mm -hmm. that's very interesting and that's why I wanted glosses, lipsticks, anything that's going on to your lips that we will have on all day, during dinner, while we drink, while we work. And what did we find out? Oh, right. So, that's just to one. 
just to put things into perspective. And Mary asked me this, and I thought it was a phenomenal question. I, really. I was wanting to know how much lipstick one ingests in a lifetime. And this is how much we ingest. This is a um, seven pound bag of potatoes. So we're e eating basically seven pounds of lipstick in our lifetime. Some more, some less, right? It's a lot but of lipstick. It's a lot of lipstick. And so really, I think you should know what's in your lipstick so that um, you're not hopefully getting lots of parabens in, which will be going directly in your body and, as you say, mm -hmm. even our breast tissues. And um, estrogenic means it can be a hormone disruptor, right? And uh, with that, That's it what can I was impede... That's what say. Yes, Good. and yeah. it, it can impede... Are uh, the whole cascade of hormones from the pituitary, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and then the ovaries, mm. right? And with that, um, so you want to make sure that there's not an accumulated amount that can disrupt this hormone, mm. and that can impact and create things like cancer, but it also can impact our ability to conceive for those who are having issues. So really, it's a good idea to stay away from things that have parabens, which is really prevalent everywhere, which... And, and like I said earlier, oftentimes we just kind of put lipstick on and we don't even think about it. So mm -hmm. um, the good news is, is that there are conscious people, including Janice here. I know she's not the only one, but I tried it two weeks ago. And again, this is probably one of the first times I really like the kind of lipstick that you, you made. So it's like, wow, I'm going to be a lifer now. Thank so thank you. And thank that's you. why I'm so keen to have Janice join us here because... Um, again, she's Canadian, so I want to help that cause. And two, because she really stands behind her products. And mm. I don't know, how many years did it take for you to test your products? Oh, it's been a work in progress. I test marketed my products in my own boutique mm -hmm. for three years. Okay. And I did not even want to brand it at that point. It was a no name. Um, and they say, actually, in the industry, that the li with us trying to be health conscious not perfect listen we're not perfect we were talking about that too um we're, we do the best we can but with our all of us are trying to look at health in a different way and and really be conscious of what we eat mostly and what we put onto our bodies and and all of that um so i wanted to test it with my consumers on a one-to-one -one basis for three years. Uh, the response was wonderful, so I closed my boutique, branded it. Now that was uh, actually, how can I say that? This was uh, five years ago, six years ago, I think I, I closed the boutique. And so it's been another five years, let's say, you know, give or take, because I, I lost a year, um, you know, six months to a year when I had my surgery. You know, I sure, worked from home. I wasn't as active doing these I, these things and out there and out there. But I was behind the scenes developing and gaining my strength back. So uh, I would say another five years. So five and three, about eight years. And with the help of Safe Science, and I was talking to even, you know, vegetarians and vegans and and I know you I have to learn a lot from you that's too. okay go <laughs> <laughs> but what it, I, we're not organic I'm not pretending to be organic Janice Carroll is a line that is put together to be healthier uh, chic fashion forward something that you would want to buy out there you know uh, at your your favorite cosmetic place or uh, online uh, something that's really with it but has healthier ingredients for example the lipsticks are not only paraben free they have avocado oil they have grapeseed oil vitamin E they don't slide off your lips either they do stay on they do stay on for sure so and I was thinking it's like oh is that bad that it stays on no it's not like the other, and I don't like to badmouth anybody, but a number of years ago, some of the less expensive lines brought out these lasting lip yes. sticks. Yes. So what? Is and it? everyone was so excited, but there's a lot of chemicals, exactly, and stains that are just 
drying your lips out, but they gave you like a little gloss to go on top, okay. but it, that's going on top. What is actually helping this stay on along with, you know, some nourishing ingredients is kaolin. And kaolin is a safe, it's a safe clay that they, that actually helps just absorb oils. Okay in your skin, in your system. Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't feel dry. Like no. so some of the products that last longer will be definitely drying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then so then why not organic? And is there an advantage to organic over what you have? I think there is a place for organic, but it's a, a very small um, you know, I hate to put anyone down. Some people really want organic, but I don't even know how you can make organic organic. What is organic? Because I don't know what the what type of water they're using. Because water should be the number one ingredient Thank in a lot you. of skincare. Exactly. So and that's what I want to allude to. Because yeah. half the time when you get marketing, right? People say this is organic, but well, you All don't natural. really know. You yeah. don't really know what that is. Yeah. Exactly. And and you you sound like you have a lot of integrity and you just say it as it is. So even though it's not pure organic well, some of the things doesn't even need to be organic. And no. I was having this conversation with our lovely Tanya Smith um, at our clinic. And so, for example, people may put avocado oil. Well, avocados don't need to be organic. Mm -hmm. They should be fine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and I, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't look into depth uh, about the ingredients mm -hmm. you just said. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. for example, grape seed. Well, I don't see that it actually has to be mm -hmm. organic because it comes from a thick peel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know what part of the constituents from the... So, from grape seeds, right? Mm -hmm. So, seeds are very internalized. So, it's protected from that thick um, uh, grapefruit right. Um, right, skin. Right, right, right. So okay. in that way, I mean, that's not one of the foods that we say it has to be absolutely mm -hmm. crucial to mm -hmm. be organic. Mm -hmm. And right? the other part was I tested some organic lip balms in my store, in my boutique. And to be honest, without any preservatives, they went rancid within a month. Right. And do I want to give someone something that's going to turn rancid and then there's other bacteria that you're going to be concerned about. Absolutely. So I need something that's going to protect you that uh, I'm eliminating the known toxins and there are there the you know the jury's out on a lot of things uh, but uh, we use phenol it sounds scary everyone and a lot of things that you read on the side of something and they say the shortest list is the best list, but to be honest, uh, a lot of the ingredients have the um, the. It's okay. What's the word? Oh my God! Not the. It's the Latin form. You know, aloe oh, okay. bar. It, yes. So aloe is not just aloe. It's the. I can't pronounce the second name, but the bar. It's a long name, so I won't get into it. But a lot of them. A lot of the names are using the Latin derivatives. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, chamomile, and then it's a whole other Sure, of course. Thing. However, we use something called, oh, it's, I left it in the other room, phenoxyethanol. Okay. It's a very safe, if you look it up, it's a very safe uh, preservative that it is now being used in place of parabens. A lot of hair companies are starting to jump on this bandwagon because your hair is something that absorbs a lot of things, even into the scalp. You're massaging it. You're doing a lot of these hair companies are trying to eliminate the parabens. Yes. So we we as I said, and we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. We do the best we can if we can eliminate the known. Uh, toxins and try to make things a little bit healthier for ourselves then that's what we're doing sure and again I want to go back to so organic versus non-organic mm -hmm. so if it's completely organic and it goes rancid and then you ingest seven pounds of that I don't think that's going to be healthy for you either so could sometimes Excellent. you know integrating a bit of science is not a bad thing. So science is not all bad and 100% um, organic is also not all good, right? It's Nothing is omnipotent is what I mean, meaning that 
sometimes it's about the integration and the mirroring mm -hmm. of the two worlds and then you can have a better product then you can have something that's safe and and probably doesn't break the bank it doesn't it doesn't right it doesn't my uh my lipsticks right now are twenty dollars they're twenty dollars for lip glosses it's an average price it's still you know it's a it's higher than some of the drugstore brands that are uh, so like Maybelline How let's say Maybelline you know what it's I think it's still about eight ten dollars okay some of them are twelve dollars L'Oreal is is sort of in between us and they're great brands so and then you've got Chanel and Dior and and can go up to with forty dollars, forty five dollars, yeah. or uh, Lancome is maybe thirty dollars. Okay, so, so then what's I'm, the difference? I'm between, mid. So what's the difference between a ten dollar lipstick and a forty dollar lipstick? That's a really good question. <laughs> and I used to be out there taking care of a lot of these companies. You know, I started right. with shoppers, so I help people with both the $10 lipstick and the, well, they weren't 40 then, but right. many years ago. High end. Yeah. So the high end was high end, you know, Arden and Lancome, and then you've got your Maybelline cover girl. Still good. I mean, I'm not putting, you know, there's a place for everything, okay. but there must, people would say, what's the best one? Well, A, it's what you like. B, I can't tell people what they want, but I do know that the quality of the ingredients must be reflected in the price. I mean, I really, I, I think that there could be, um, it, it depends on what they're using. The I grades really, of Yeah, substances. the grades of substances. Yeah. Okay. However, what I was going to say before was, and I was reading this in, in terms of, of small businesses and small businesses of many types. The little guys, I shouldn't really refer to myself as a little guy, but I am compared to, you know, all these big giants uh, who have built their way up like Mac and whatever. The little guys, and I was around when Mac started, whoa, um, in the industry. I saw it grow. Whoa. Okay, now I feel old. Stop. Okay, go. Keep going. Keep um, <laughs> we're not talking all night. Let's go. <laughs> okay, you're funny. The little, the way little guys can start off without the parabens and without the ingredients that have been in their, their, um, you know, their list of ingredients for so many years. Mm -hmm. So a big guy, it's going to be hard for them to start redoing formulas that they've had for so long. So it's really an expensive proposition for them to start saying, uh-oh, maybe we better start eliminating this and eliminating that. That's like a huge expense. And listen, there's some people out there who don't care. Mm -hmm. They'll still go buy what they really love, mm -hmm. and that's great. But for people who are starting to care and look at what's in their lipsticks and look at what's going into their bloodstream, then us up-and-coming little companies that are going to grow um, can start off without it mm -hmm. okay. and that's a big thing that's fair so and I don't like to say what's better than uh, that's a hard question for me I, I really hate to put down even a less expensive brand or a more expensive brand I think everyone has a reason for buying a less expensive brand oh, or a more sure. expensive and I don't want to say anything about it really it's, well it's hard I think okay that's very I want to be yeah no I think that's fair. very fair and so then on that note I do want to say that you know some people who are, I guess, activists or what mm -hmm. have you, would say, "Well, why wear makeup? Why wear makeup at all?" Mm -hmm. It's a fair point, right? But I have to say, being a woman, we tend to self-judge, and Ooh. being a woman, yeah. we kind of want to feel good about ourselves. So sometimes I would, in fact, say that a little makeup at times can lighten up your spirit, mm -hmm. add a little color, pop a little color, and feel better about yourself, right? So in fact, I don't know if you know this, but when it comes to recessions, um, the two industries actually increase in sales, and I think lipstick 
yep. is one. You got it. And uh, alcohol. So if you're going to choose between lipstick and alcohol, I think I choose the lipstick, right? Um, especially when it comes to any kind of health issues. So, yeah. Uh, so really, it's like, I don't think anyone has to really give up makeup, but at least be more self-conscious and conscientious about it. And mm -hmm. I know that we're also into uh, about not harming any animals, which... A lot of companies are not now testing on animals. I know yours we don't doesn't. Test, absolutely not, and our packaging is is really quite eco friendly because I and this keeps your costs down too. I, you know, as this is very pretty on its own, so I do not put it into another box. Gotcha. With a beautiful silver lining, as much as that's gorgeous. You take it out and you put it in right. the garbage. Oh, that's or good. In your blue box. You're right. They all come with a package. Yeah, a lot so, of them do, and okay. my lipsticks don't either. Because that's what are you going to do with that box? You're going to throw it out. So you're going to have to pay me more to put it into a box. So let's keep, you know, everything out of the landfills. Even though, it, you know, those boxes hopefully you put into your blue box, but still, it's less is more. So Absolutely. it's very simple, oh, minimalistic, elegant, okay. but better for the environment. Thank so, you. Yeah. Well, I think we've talked a lot, and maybe what we'll do is instead um, bring you back another time, we'll actually talk about skin itself. Because as you know, mm -hmm. I, I think you might know, that the largest organ in our body is the skin. Mm -hmm. So what gets absorbed in the skin is important. And again, you want it to be paraben-free and probably more natural products. And I know that you have a line so for that as well. So mm -hmm. we can discuss that and your perspective mm -hmm. about skin products. No, this is, so this is fun. Sorry, I talk. You know, I get very... Uh, <laughs> I'll very, have to reel you back. Very excited, That's you know, okay. about the subject, which no. is good. And I love reaching out to people. So it's part of who I am. Well, and I, I think this is, again, a very important conversation just because most of us wear it. And, you know, is there a wonder? It's like, oh, my goodness, is this going to contribute to my health uh, issues? Or, you know, can I keep healthy uh, in the long run and not worry about cancer or fertility challenges mm -hmm. or other mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in general? Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so This is wonderful. That's great. And so if you want to uh, check her, uh, check Janice Carroll's cosmetics out. I'll uh, put you the link on my uh, live post in the comment section at the end. Thank you. And uh, you can reach out to her directly and ask for anything that you'd like. Or if Definitely. you have any questions right now, you can actually um, post us a little comment and ask. And we can answer that right off the bat. Otherwise, um, next week, next Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join me again. And we're going to do something cool and fun which is called uh, herbal steam for your lady parts yes that's what i'm saying it's actually a vaginal Ooh. steam with herbs <laughs> and there are lots of therapeutic properties Ooh. to that so we're going to talk about that and you can bring on any questions if you'd like and uh totally looking forward to being part of this again so next wednesday be here be square 9 30 p.m eastern standard time thank you for watching thank you janice thank <laughs> you thanks mary